personal finance practice problem using Excel. Estimated future dividends and earnings per share. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key. Let's look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're looking at common stock, trying to predict what's going to happen in the future from trends in the past, possibly to help us out with investing types of decisions. The second tab, practice tab, will have some pre-formatted cells so you can work the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The third tab, the blank tab, we will be dealing with the Excel formatting. If you don't have anything, you could just open up a blank sheet. I would select the entire sheet by selecting the triangle, possibly if you had a blank sheet, right click on the selected area format so you can lay down the baseline formatting, which I usually go with the currency and then the uh, brackets in red for negative numbers, no dollar sign and no decimal. I'm not gonna hit okay because I already have this. I'm just gonna X out up top. Then you can add your data on the left-hand side, adding uh, information as needed, formatting sales as needed. For example, putting decimals here and a percentization there, and then we're good to go. So the information on the left, we've got the earnings per share, and we're looking at past data for we're just going to say X1, X2, X3, X4, and so on that we have calculated in past data to try to help us out with what we think is going to be the trend going forward. We got the earnings per share a constant rate of growth assumed to continue, meaning when we're trying to figure out what's going to happen in the future, we have to make some assumptions. Note that we could make similar assumptions to other investments, but it's easier with things like fixed income type things like bonds, because if we're trying to value bonds, we can think about what's going to be the future income of the bonds. And that will typically be defined, of course, in the terms of the bonds in formal uh, interest payments, typically semi-annual, for example, and a maturity payment with the stocks the value that we're going to be receiving will be possibly an increase in the valuation of the stock itself and the dividends that might be paid out to us in the future so those are the things that we can try to predict what's going to happen in the future to try to value the stocks at this point in time so the dividend percent of earnings we're going to say is 30 percent now note that uh, the the dividend policy of a corporation could differ depending on the corporation the dividend policy represents the company taking the earnings they have and distributing it, it to the owners, which are the shareholders. The shareholders cannot just take draws as they do for like a partnership, for example, because all the shares have to represent the same amount that's being distributed. Therefore, the dividend policy will be determined by the board of directors and the management. So they might determine that dividend policy. Typically, they're going to want dividends to go up and not typically go down, or at least not go down un, uh, without any knowing happen because that could be a bad sign to the market. So they might have a policy, however, that they tie the dividends to the earnings. And, and that could be a typical kind of strategy because then you can have the dividends going up and down in relation to the earnings. So we'll make an assumption here that we're gonna say the dividend percent of earnings is the 30%. So given that, we might look at past data and try to get some idea about the valuation of the stock by looking at trends in the earnings per share. After calculating the earnings per share, we might then try to say, well, let's take the difference. How much is the earnings per share going up by and see if we can extend that trend into the future. So for example, in 2022, I can say this is going to be the 1380 minus the 12. This is a typical running balance type of calculation. I'm going to add a couple decimals, home tab number group add a couple decimals do it again we're going to say okay 2000 x3 the 1587 is where we are now minus where we were before and we could of course copy this down i'm going to add some decimals which i'll do in a second but just to see the trend clearly in x4 we've got 1825 minus the 1587 add some decimals and then of course in x5 we've got the 2099 that we're at minus the 1825 adding some decimals there it is now tip this is a really useful kind of of running balance analysis we see this often in excel and the easiest way to do that is you could do the first calculation i'm going to delete this to show it and then you can just copy that down by putting your cursor on the fill handle dragging down 
and it'll do that running balance calculation. So there is that. So we can see this, this difference that is applying out here and that's useful. And then we can also say, okay, what, what is the percentage increase that is happening here? So now we can say, okay, if it went from 12 to uh, 18, 1380, we got a 1.8% increase, but possibly I want to look at the percent increase because that could be something I can use, for example, to compare to other stocks to see what their percentage increase is, even if they have a different earnings per share. To do that, we're going to take the difference divided by the prior balance. So keep remember, it's the prior balance. So this is going to be the 8, 1.8 divided by the 12. So I'm going to add some decimal or percentize it. Home tab, font group, we need to recognize by percentifies. Add some decimals possibly, but it's even. So then we're going to do that same thing here. This equals the change that happened from uh, X2 to X3 divided by the prior period. This is the percentage increase. Very, again, a very common kind of metric when you're trying to think about the increase in things in things like job performance, for example, if you were to measure baseball players increases and, and so on, you would use a similar kind of calculation. So it's really useful to have and be able to calculate with. And so we've got the same uh, percent increase. It's going to come out nice and even because that's how we set it up. We got the 2.38 divided by the prior period, 1587. And once again, that comes out nice and even. And then one more time, we got the change from X4 to X5, the 2.74 divided by the 1825 on X4 and percentifies and decimalize it. Okay, now we can copy that down. It's a little bit more tricky. So let's let's do that the easy way. I'm gonna delete these. What, you're gonna delete? Yeah, I'm gonna delete it, but, but then we'll do it the easy way. Double click on here. And so so now when we copy this down, we want this cell in C5 to move down and and we want this cell over here to move down. So that's an easy formula. We should just be able to copy that down like so and double click. I thought we needed an absolute reference, but no, we're good all the way down. So there's a 15% change all the way down. Now that's a very consistent uh, earnings trend that we can then assume is going to happen as we go out into the future. It might not be that consistent. We might have to basically try to see what the data points are basically with this trend and then and then see what the most likely data point would be. Try to draw a line through the dot pattern, right? To see what, what the most likely pattern would be if we were to draw, draw a straight line through it, for example. Uh, so that's what we'll do here. So now let's take about the earnings per share calculation the estimated earnings per share calculation for the following year, the next year. And we could do a quick calculation. Let's put, let's make our E a skinny column. I'm gonna skin her, skinny up E. And then we're gonna say, this is the estimated earnings per share. And we'll do it with like a, a table kind of format. So we'll open this up and let's say this is for X. Let's say this is for X6, X6. What do we expect to happen? Let's make this black and white. I'm going to select from F1 to H1, make that our header home tab, font group, drop down on the bucket, black and the lettering is white. So we've got the earnings per share. So let's take the, the earnings per share for X5, which I'm going to put in the outer column here. I'm going to say that was equal to the 2099. That's where we left off. And we'll make that a decimalized number, adding some decimals. And then we'll make the subcategory, which will be the increase. So the increase percent, let's call it brackets. It's gonna be the earnings per share estimated growth rate, let's say. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. I'm gonna put this in the inner column. This is of course gonna be that 15% that we're estimating that's, that's exact here. But again, even if it wasn't exact, we could try to draw a trend line, which, which is what we think is the most likely outcome. And then home tab number percentifies that. And we're gonna, we're gonna add one to it plus one, plus one to get it to 115%. So I'm gonna underline that. And then we're gonna say that this is going to be the, the earnings per share, the estimated earnings per share for X6, say X6. 
I'm sorry, this is going to be the increase percent, which is going to be equal to the sum of the 15 plus the 1, or 115, the 1 could be a 100 number, let's make that a percent, so 115 or 1.15, 1 and we're going to underline that, and then we've got this will be the, the estimated earnings per share x6, it's a little x, x6, and that's going to be equal to the 20.99 outer column times the 115. So that's going to be 24, adding some decimals, home tab, font group, couple decimals, uh, 2414. Or in other words, you could do it this way, right? You could say it would be the 2099, adding some decimals times 0.15, making that a percent. That means the increase would be this times this. That would be the three, adding some decimals, 0.15, and then add the original number. So this plus this would be the 24. So you can calculate the increase. Uh, hold on. You could calculate the increase that way and then and then get to that. Or you could say it's going to be 15% plus the original 100% or 1. And that gives you 115%, which is a little bit faster of a calculation there. I'm going to undo. Let's let's format paint over all this to get the cells back let's do some let's do some formatting here i'm going to select let's select these three and indent them home tab number uh, alignment indent and then indent again uh, hold on indent again and then i'm going to make this all blue i'll select the whole thing home tab font group bucket drop down that's the blue i want i'm going to find it in the more colors standard and there's the blue right there okay and then font group brackets and then we'll choose these items too let's make that bracketed and blue because we entered data there and so there we have it now if we've got the earnings per share going forward we can of course also calculate the dividends so estimated dividends for x6 let's make this uh blue and or black, black and white we'll hit the bucket black and white so we've got the earnings per share calculation i'm going to make this a little bit larger so we can see it that's the 2414 we'll make that numbers and decimals and then we said the dividend dividend percent of earnings per share is 30 percent and again we're going to assume that's the case because it might be actually the policy of the company right to do something like that to try to tie their dividends to the earnings per share we might see a similar trend in in how they're calculating their dividends as the earnings go up they possibly are have a trend of increasing their dividends so the estimated estimated dividends then is the 2414 times the 30 percent adding some decimals and we can go then home tab add a couple decimals there we have it let's make this blue and bordered so we'll make this border blue and so there we have it now you also might might try to do this in like a a trend so you can see not just x6 but going forward so if i make like a skinny let's make a skinny eye selecting this and going to the skinny eye so we might have like a, a running type of balance where we're going to say that we have let's say we have like the period and then we've got the earnings per share and then this would be estimated earnings per share and then the, the dividends dividends and so the period i'm going to say is is we've got x6 x7 right x8 x9 and we can continue out as far as we want to go based on these assumptions let's make this black and white font group and make this black and white and so we can make this j a little bit thinner let's make these centered to alignment and center them so in x6 the earnings per share we could say okay the earnings per share is simply going to be the prior earnings per share i'll pull that from here the 20.99 times what we determined to be 
the one plus what we determine the change to be that we're gonna go for. So brackets one plus the 15%. And so brackets and enter. So we get the 24, let's go up top and then say, add some decibels. So we get the 24.14. So we just basically did this calculation again. And from there going forward, we could say, okay, it's gonna go up by 15% again. So we're gonna take the, pri the prior number X6, if we assume this trend is gonna keep going forward and we can multiply it times. I'm gonna pick up the 15% the over here plus one. I gotta put that in brackets though brackets hold on a second well i know i know excel 15 plus one because of order of operation so i'm going to take that times 15 percent plus the original or times 115 percent i want to make that 15 percent absolute so i can copy it down and it doesn't move down i want this one not to be absolute because i do want it to move down as we pull it down so i'm going to say f4 on the keyboard for this one out here d d8 and you only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. Enter. And I'm gonna go home tab, add some decimals, put my cursor on the fill handle and drag that down. So now you've got, you know, you can get like a trend analysis going forward. And we said the dividends are always just gonna be 30% of whatever the earnings per share is. That's our predictions. So I could take the earnings per share times the dividend. Let's pull it from our data over here and take F4 on the keyboard because this is outside my data set. I don't want it to move down. I do want K2 to move down. So all you, all you need is a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. I'm gonna hit okay, put my cursor back on it. Home tab, I'm sorry, numbers, add some decimals. There's the 724. And then I'm gonna put my cursor on the fill handle, double click, and that'll just drag it on down. So you can see a trend going forward. Let's center these, let's go to the home tab alignment and center those so so and we can obviously extend that that trend down uh, as far as we think would be applicable for for our usefulness and as far as we think the trend might be uh, applicable to think about going forward so i'm going to go to the brackets and make that blue let's do a quick review of the spelling looks good 